Hey everyone, thank you for stopping by Living To Do's review of Married At First Sight, Season 16, Episode 25. Before I get started with the review, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and I thank you in advance. So let's go ahead and get started with Part 2 of the reunion. Part two starts off with Kevin talking to Shaquille and Kirsten. Shaquille is basically saying that he never thought he was good enough for Kirsten. And this is why he said no on decision day. Kevin is telling Kirsten, after talking to Shaq, that Shaq just made a mistake. So why not get back together? And Kirsten is saying, the moment is over. Uh, at this point, they don't acknowledge that what he did to this girl could possibly hurt her. Just flip the script. He's be ready to get back together, so let's do this thing. What about the feelings that you hurt in the process? Where's that apology? Where is that healing? Where is that consoling? You just say, oh, he wants you now, so come on, let's do this. We don't, it doesn't work that way. And Kevin, I know it's a TV show, but this is their real lives. Why do you do things like that? They also brought out Kirsten and Shaquille's, their mothers. Kirsten's mother is a real beautiful woman, and she's a cute figure. I like what she has to say. Uh, I really like her. Now, Shaq's mother said uh, that she was really excited for them both. And she felt like when she met Kirsten and her family at the wedding, that it was like a reunion and not just meeting for the first time. So they really clicked in jail and they felt like family. So they felt, I guess she's thinking in her mind, I feel this way. I feel a closeness and a connection to these people. I, you know, I can see them being family right off the bat. So I guess she just thought things would go smoothly for Kirsten and, and Shaquille. And Kirsten underst Kirsten's mother understood Shaquille when he wanted to spend more quality time with her family. She had, she can understand that. Now, we learned that Kirsten was actually um, apprehensive to be out in public in Nashville with Shaquille. She didn't want to run into any friends to explain who he was because it might not work out. And then she would, you know, be embarrassed, I guess, the next time around she saw who the said person, her friends in the community there. She said she was nervous about being in public and she had some in insecurities in Shaq. I wonder what she meant by that. Was it his appearance, the way he carried himself in public? It seems like she might be embarrassed a little bit though. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm sensing with her. And in turn, I guess that made Kirsten not feel secure in the marriage. Kirsten's mother said both of them had high expectations. In fact, they were too high. There seems to be an encouragement everywhere for these two to get back together very strongly. Kevin, the mothers would love to see it. Shaq is, he's seeming interested in Kirsten. I think what we're seeing here is Kirsten is, she's not going past go at this moment. They did explain that they were going to go out on a date that evening. They really looked dressed up for that. And backstage, after their segment was over, uh, they embrace. Um, I don't know if she's warming up to the idea of this. You know, I wonder how her dating life has been since the breakup with Shaquille. Are people interested? Is she, is she interested in others? Uh, interesting. That was an interesting uh, segment. Okay, let's go on to the next segment. On the next segment, we see Dominique and Mac talking to Kevin. 
Kevin wants to know what happened, what caused the downfall in their relationship. And McKinley believes that Dom was overwhelmed by him, his personality, his quirks and things like that. And Dominique said she was really concerned. She really wanted her partner to be someone with ties to Nashville that would stay in Nashville. And she had a strong, overwhelming feeling that wasn't the case when it came to McKinley. They talked about the divorce. And McKinley says that he was surprised that she even asked for the divorce. Dominique said it was based on a conversation that they had prior off camera that he was pretty much done with the relationship and mulling that over in her head she thought he was quitting on the relationship why you know should she stay in it put in effort and energy into something that wasn't going to be so she didn't want to go any further to drag it out just to be on TV because that wasn't the type of person that she was and she didn't think he was either. So she just ended it. Sorry for that. They're doing the fireworks early. Um, Dominique said that she really wanted McKinley to fight for her. He, she wanted him to pull her back. And who could have seen that coming? You see, you said you're out, your face and everything screamed out. And I don't know, maybe you say that now, but in the moment that could tick you off even more. You would fight back even more sometimes. And sometimes you got to let people go. They showed us never seen footage that Dominique and McKinley had. They were out to dinner. And this is after the breakup and everything. And she wanted to know, um, why, you know, he unfollowed her and had all his family unfollow her. I don't think that's a big deal. If the relationship's over, um, and I don't think it ended all that well anyway, why would you follow somebody? You just want to cut ties sometimes and start over if you mean a breakup. So to me, that's not... That's not unreasonable. I would imagine you would unfollow somebody. You don't want to, you know, you're trying to move on. And I think the best way to move on is severed ties and not know what that person's doing in their life. They're posting all the time. You're having feelings. Uh, it's one-sided. I just cut ties, unfollow. But now she asked him during the reunion if they would be, you know, if he would be her friend. And he said, yeah. So it seemed like they, uh, they had a better, a better ending to their relationship than when we saw them interact at some of the group functions. You can tell the disdain she had for him. It was all over her face. It was like, it seemed like it was hard for her to sit there. The way she was eating her food, she didn't even seem like she was enjoying that. Uh, so they definitely needed time to regroup. She was asked about him dating Gina and what she thought about it. And she thought they would make a great match. Huh. I just seemed to me, there's some hurt. You were matched with this guy. You were married. You're laying in bed with him. I think they consummated their marriage and you don't have any feelings with him going to your castmate and pursuing her. And, you know, when Gina and Matt got together, he said that he was more attracted to Gina than Dominique. You know, her hearing that back, I think that would crush her. But they agreed now after everything is said and done that they're better communicators. After going through something and looking back on it, reflecting on it, you could see your do's and don'ts and then you can do better in the future. I think that's learning from your mistakes. Okay, let's go on to the next segment. Okay, next up, Kevin Frazier talked to Gina and Mac um, because they were going out. Or they had gone on a date after leaving their spouses. And married at first sight, they continue to match up 
previous um, couples to other couples that they had on their show. They need their own internal dating app. If you don't like what we picked for you, check out our app and select somebody else. It is the weirdest thing. These people, is this a thing you just date within your your circle, your community, your Mavs community? They don't branch out. Are they doing it because these people are already vetted somewhat and you got to see who they are on um on TV a little bit and then you're interested it's safer that way because they have a track record of people going out with each other after you know they've ended their relationship I see Mindy and Steve from previous seasons they weren't the same season they're they're hooking up and it seems to be going okay I know people have dated and things just would go awry with the other couples. But Mindy and Steve, they have the same type of temperament. It would have been interested. I would have been interested to see them actually be matched uh, together to see how that would have unfolded in front of us. Like a real relationship. People that are really trying and really want this. They tend to match people that are too picky with people who really want this and it doesn't work out. But Gina and McKinley are still dating, or they went out. They I don't know how much they are really actually dating. They were going to have their second date the night of the reunion, because, of course, he lives in Michigan, and she's in Nashville, so it's long distance, and he's going to be coming back in a couple weeks and take her out then. So I don't know really how that would work. Would he be willing to come back to Nashville if there is something there? He just bought a home. She just opened a salon. I don't think it will work out. But you never know. And how does she, how do they feel dating their friend circle's spouses? That is so weird. And it's just been a short period of time they were with somebody else that each person knew strange 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 it seems like you need some time to pass before you even think of doing something like that i don't know well next week they'll have um they're going out all the couples again so we'll see if they're still together or if there's still something there um Kevin Frazier talked to the guys alone in this episode nothing really came out of it they talked about Gina and McKinley uh, seeing each other dating and Shaquille said to Clint maybe he can walk Hank down the aisle because uh, he's really really loving Hank they had a montage of him and Hank together and him and Gina both teared up seeing that he says Hank was you know one, probably one of the best things that came out of this experiment he really, really loved Hank. And in my opinion, he loves Hank more than Gina loves Hank, which is sad, but it's her dog. But he's really connected to that dog. And he says he will get a dog when he's ready. It will be a big dog like Hank. That that, that was a, a cute little love story that they showed. The experts spoke to two couples. One couple was uh, Dominique and McKinley. Dr. Pepper didn't think that they fulfilled their potential. And Dom started crying. She says that she feels like a failure, that this failed marriage relationship weighs heavy on her heart. I think it's Dr. P.S. said, you know, she needs to change her mindset. And she started crying even more. She didn't understand the feelings that were coming up. And as I see her doing this, I'm thinking to myself, I think that any type of budding relationship and interest that McKinley has in Gina does hurt her. That's what I think. And I don't know why this TV show would do something like that to hurt people like that. Even if they say they don't, it doesn't hurt. What would you do if it if they were honest and said it did hurt? Would you continue to go on and hurt people like this? I don't care what she says. I think she is hurt. I think it is in poor taste for him to go out with somebody that she knows so close 
after their failed relationship. The experts also talked to Shaquille and Kirsten. And Kirsten, too, teared up uh, while meeting with the experts, saying that she was hurt. She was hurt. I think she's caught. I don't know if she really knows what she wants. And if she is going to allow Shaquille to pursue her again, they should take it very slow. And maybe hold off for a while. Don't even rush into anything. Just because, so she'll know what she wants. I think she even questioned if she wanted him back then. And then you hurt her. Would she just come back to soothe some pain? And then once she's healed or after time, she would really become her true self again and maybe not want him. I think it's best to take time. He embarrassed you on TV at that. Take some more time to see what you want. I don't even know, think they should start doing little friendship dates or whatnot. Just do you for a while and see if you miss him. I think they there's a chance that they could possibly work. They had the group scene where the, all the couples were talking to Kevin and... Kevin asked Clint and Dominique about that kiss. Dominique basically said it was a dare. She lost and she had to pay her debt. So she had to kiss Clint. She was just joking that she had to pay her debt. Her debt. But that was cute. But uh, debt or no debt. I thought there was something there. And if maybe not for her. I thought there was something there for Clint. Clint, I don't know if you're going to come and tell the truth years from now, but I could see that wasn't just a kiss. If she wanted to pursue something, Clint would be all in. And I also want to know, did Dominique kiss Clint after Gina and McKinley's date? Because that would have pushed it a little bit. She would have made it a little bit more of a performance kiss in front of Gina. You know, a little get back because she had the opportunity to do so. Huh. And they didn't ask that question. But I would be curious to know when the sequence of events occurred. When she knew he was interested in her and went out on a date with her. Is that why she was all in for that kiss? Because it wasn't a peck. It wasn't a peck. She gave it to him a little bit and he responded. But basically that was it for now. Next week we'll be, where are they now? They're going on some outing together as couples. So we'll see what's happening there. Um, I think of this show, the experts should really stress to these castmates, contestants, or whatever you want to call them, that we're matching you up based on some fundamental things uh, about your your personality, lifestyle, and what have you. And it's not always about looks. I know you just want a basic, attractive person you should start with. But I think they should really tell them the message of just let go, relax, and communicate. If you just let go of all your past, whatever, whatever you're thinking, let go. Just relax and talk to the next person that you're with, you're, you're matched with. Just enjoy their company. Create a space where you can just talk and see where it goes. Don't start jumping off. Oh, I don't like so-and-so. They don't have this. They don't have that. Just talk and see if something will, will, will click. Like Eris. I don't know what his problem was in the past, but just talk. And see if you can build a, an adult relationship. You're just building a foundation. And see where it goes. Because it's too much of this chaos, mismatching, and people don't get along. It's just weird. I think they're, take, they're approaching everything wrong. They're approaching the experiment incorrectly. And they're getting in their own way by doing what they used to do. This is something new, and if you want it to work, do the work. 
Okay, that's it for now. Thank you for staying with me till the end. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I thank you in advance, but I gotta go because I got living to do. Bye.